It's the MLM for the Soul channel, and I do have a new topic for today. But before I begin, I wanted to say that may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And I also want to thank some people who are continually helping me to inspire my journey. They are Rabbi Shalom Arosh, Rabbi Lazar Brody, Rabbi Yossi Kuzrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansour, Rabbi Daniel Asur, Rabbi Alon Anava, Yuval Ovadia, Nisan Baruch Black, David Sachs, and who am I forgetting? Uh, Jews for Judaism, Rabbi Michael Stoback. And I will have links below this video to their sites. And you can check them out as well. So, you will hear the name of the topic after I do this little scene. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth? What? Where am I? Oh, but hold on. I'm holding the Tanakh. From Art Scroll. Can you see that? This is the Holy Bible. This is not the fake one that they use in the courts. The topic for today is called Do You Swear to Tell the Truth? Dot, dot, dot. Lahavdil, Elif al Fayal, often as a totally kind of flip side in a court of law, they use the fake Bible. And you put your hand on it, and you have to swear to tell the truth. So, this is going to be all about truth. Truth in Hebrew is emet, or emes. Some people say it without the dot and the tuff. Or, and, um, so, in comparison, which is totally secular, in a court, if you can get away with quote-unquote murder, because you can bend the rules, you can basically bribe people, pay them off. But we know in Shemayim, in heaven, the court of heaven and Hashem, you can't do that. Um, lo Isa, what does it say? Uh, that uh, there's, there's an expression, Lo, lo Yikach lo, uh, No, no, I'm sorry, that's a different <laughs> expression. Uh, let's see, it's... Um, Lotikaf Shochad. There's another part of that where it is Hashem doesn't show favor and he doesn't take bribes. I'm sorry I forgot the whole expression. Just blank out of my uh, memory. Um, so that's the point is up there you can't get away with anything. That's the world of Emes. And this is the world of Sheker. This is the world of lies. So where you can get away with just about anything you can think of. So this is the real deal, so to speak. This is the truth. Right here, Emma's, this book. And in here, and what I'm, I wanted to just show you is that in our davening, as well, our tefillot that we say, the word emet or MS is used countless times. If it's there and if it's here, why aren't we saying the Emes? And I'll get to that in a moment, but first I wanted to point out in the in the sitter, just some different places where the word during our davening. And don't forget, I, as a female, I do pretty comprehensive davening, especially in the morning for shacharit. But um, the men say a lot more than me, so I may have overlooked some words. And uh, I'm sure it's said countless more times. I haven't done a, a thorough analysis, but I do know that where I have found it. Let me see here. I will share that with you. Um, when we come to, before the Amidah, before the silent prayer, let me just find the right page here. Excuse me as I find it. I'm not there quite yet. Let's see. Okay, so this is where we say, um, it's called Berchat Geula. It says Emet, the first word. Yatsiv and Achom it goes on and on. And then, um, it says, um, continues on and says, Emet Eloke Olam Alkeinu. And then it, again, uh, let's see. Then it says, the next paragraph says, Al Rishinim Al 
And then it says, Emet but Muna, Chok Velo Yavar. Then there's Emet, Truth and Amuna. And then continuing on, the next page where it's Ezra at the then it says, Emet Atahu Adon Amecha. And then it says, Emet Atahu Rishon Ato Acharon. So there's Emet used again. Then we go on to after the Amida. And this is in what's called Uval Tzion, where you say before, before the Aleinu. And it says in here, um, Tzitkatcha Tzedek li Olam, Yitorcha Emet, Yitor is truth. And then continuing on in the Animamin, it says, it mentions the words again in relation to uh, let's see. emet that all the what the prophets say is truth, and then it goes on to say, that his prophecy was was uh, truth. And uh, so, I mean, there's countless other times it says it in the mincha prayer in in um, in, Sh- in Shabbat. There's so many different places, and uh, the word emet and in case you don't know, basically the seal, like, you know, let's say someone has an insignia or a seal of who they are or what their MO is. For Hashem, it's emet. Hashem is truth. There's nothing about Hashem that isn't truth. Everything is truth. We have to live the truth, and the truth is in the Torah. This is the Tanakh. Actually, this is the 24 books of the Bible, and this is the art scroll version of the pocket edition. I'll have a link to their uh, site below where you can find out more about all their great um, books that they sell and star in that are wonderful that you want to check out. And uh, being that we're coming upon, we just finished Rosh Hashanah and now we're coming on Yom HaKippurim. This is the Aseret Yemei Tshuva. This is the 10 days of time for, for getting close to Tashem to return to do Tshuva. And um, and then is Yom HaKippurim, so we have to remember MS. And this has become a theme in my head lately in, in thinking because it's very sad to see that so many communities, they're not, they're afraid to say the truth. What is the problem? Hashem says the truth in His book. We read from the Torah every Shabbat. Uh, the men here, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays they read from the Torah. And everything is in here, the commandments, what will happen to you if you observe them, what will happen to you if you don't. And someone even said, oh, well, why does, why does Hashem have to be so descriptive, so, so much horrible things? I said, well, it's because if you don't follow what He says, there is consequences. And that's what people forget. And it's amazing where people don't want to share the truth. Hashem says it and hear the truth. For example, one very strong example is about people who don't who desecrate the, sh- the Shabbat, who, who, who are Mechalel Shabbat. And it says here in Shemot Lamed Aleph, I'm going to find that page, what Hashem says to Moshe. Uh, let's see, page 214, and I'll have links again to the exact page references that I'm talking to in this particular Hamash. So this is in Shemot Lamed Bet, if I can find it, bear with me. Uh, let me see here, I'm on the right page yet, I'm going too slowly. Okay, and this is Parshat Ki Sisa, or Tisa, however you pronounce it. So this is when Hashem is telling him about Shabbat, and here's what he says. And I'm not, oh, here he says, I'm going to read it in Hebrew, and then I'll explain it in English as well. So... Sorry, I'm getting the light, the uh, shadow here on me. So it says, Vayomar Hashem HaMoshe Lemar, Vatad Daber El B'nei Yisrael Lemar, Achet Shabto Tait Shishmoru, Ki Oti Beini Veinechem, Udorotechem Ladat Ki Ani Hashem Mekadosh Chem, Ushamart Neta Shabbat Ki Kadosh Ki Lachem Mechaleleha Mot Yumat, Ki Cho HaOseh Vamalacha Vemechorta HaNefesh Haki, Mikarav Ameha, Sheshet Jamim Yehasem Lacha O Vayom Ashri Shabbat Shabbaton Kodesh LaHashem Kol HaOsem Lacha Vayom Shabbat Mot Yumat. Now this is in the reference of how many Sukkim I said um, to talk about it. One, I think it was three Sukkim, two or three. 
um, actually two, and it said it already three times. So what does he say to Moshe? Speak to the children of Israel, saying, you must observe my, my Sabbaths. And uh, for it is a sign between me and you for generations to know that I am Hashem who made you holy. You shall observe the Shabbat, for it is holy to you. Its desecrated shall be put to death, for whoever does work on it, the soul shall be cut from among its people. So when Hashem says the soul, what does that mean? The soul is not, is not a physical thing. So that means in the next world, you will, you will be cut off from among your people. For six days work may be done, and on the seventh day is the day of complete rest. It is sacred to Hashem, whoever does work on the Shabbat day shall be put to death. Okay, again, this is the simple text I'm reading you. There's no extrapolation, there's no deep, detailed commentary. This is the simple shot, the simple meaning from Hashem telling Moshe. How much more clear can it be what we need to do? If it's not clear as a bell, then how could you, I don't know what else you could say. It's, it's just mind-boggling, and, and people just don't get it. And then, if we go on, I'll show you one more place. This is in the Paraklamid Hay. Um, this is when Moshe is talking to the name Israel after Hashem tells him. Um, this is in part of Bayakel. This is still in, in Sefer Shmos. So it says, Vayaka Moshe el kol adap b'nei Yisrael v'ayom ha'alehem. Eile ha'advarim asher tsiva Hashem l'asot otam. Sheshet shamim ka'asem l'acha v'ayom ha'shri yiyeh l'achem kodesh. Shabbat Shabbaton v'ashem kol ha'oseh v'omolacha yumat. Lo tabu eish v'chol moshotechem v'ayom ha'shabbat. So what does this mean? Moshe assembled the entire assembly of children of Israel and said to them, These are the things that Hashem commanded to do them. On six days work may be done, but the seventh day shall be holy for you. A day of complete rest for Hashem. Whoever does work on it shall be put to death. You shall not kindle fire or any of your dwellings on the Shabbat day. And um, so, again, it's, it's so explicit. It's so it's simple that how can... And, and again, the, the leaders of communities are not telling people these things, this information is very important. You're, you, you're held responsible for your community if you don't let them know that what they're doing is against Hashem and the Torah. The truth is in here. Why are we not saying the truth? Musar, we have to rebuke, we have to let people know the truth. We have to know, of course, maybe in a nice way, you have to tell them, do you know that what you're doing is against the Torah? It's against the truth of Hashem? Hashem is truth? We're going to have to face up to the truth in heaven. And you could say things in a nicer way, or like things with modesty. You know, I thought about this too. That's another issue that Tori talks about. Is, you know, you could say to someone, maybe you see wearing a shorter skirt or something. Most of the time, it's a lot of people wear shorter tight skirts. And sometimes they wear short sleeves too. But I was thinking I could say, you know what? I think you would look really nice in one of those long, pretty flowing skirts. And then the second part of that would be, and you know, I think Hashem would like it too. Maybe that would wake them up. It's in a nicer way. Instead of telling them that, you know, you know, you look like a, you know what, like this, you're sharing them in a nicer way. Make them realize that what they're doing isn't okay. Or if someone is dressed in a, sh in a like a shirt that's not basically a, a respectful to wear in, in, in a place that where Hashem is, where Shechina is in the, in, the, in, the, in the synagogue, Beit HaKneset, and you can say to him, hey, you know what, you probably look great in one of those nice button-down, long sleeve shirts, you know, nice, you know, looking, something like that, where you make them feel good and try to kind of give them the understanding that they need to look better and that Hashem would love it too. So the other thing I wanted to share with you too that actually Rabbi Mizrahi brought at this point because it's what, it's what basically changed his life when he... Um, became a uh, Torah observant when he wasn't for a, 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 the early part of his life is that I think it was his cousin in Israel said to him that you know a person who desecrates a Shabbos is worse than a murderer and he was kind of like stunned so I mean when you say that to someone they're like what? You know, how could that be? It doesn't make sense when you murder and you kill a person how, how is that not so bad? Well, it's according to Hashem. Again, we don't make the rules, and I want to say this. None of what I'm telling you, of course, I've read to you from the truth, from the truth of the Torah of Hashem. 
none of this is my opinion, you know. It was up to me, you know, I might still want people to be have morals and be civil, but maybe I wouldn't have so many obligations or commandments, but Hashem does. And don't forget there are more mitzvot lotase, which, which are commandments that you should, things you should not do than there are that you should do. What does that tell you? There's a lot of things that Hashem is prohibiting. And you have to keep those mitzvot the same way. So we're going to go to Shemot again. Perek Chaf, and this is where the Asera Hadibrot are. So how can we show that someone who's a murderer is worse than, is, is, is not as bad off as someone who's Mechal Shabbos? Well, it all has to do with the order of the Asera Hadibrot. And let me find that here, which is, again, Shemot Perek Chaf. Find the page here again. Okay. Just bear with me again as I find my page here. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, it's, so it's Parashat. Um, let's see, what Parashat are we in here? Parashat, it's Parashat, a Parashat, it's Parashat Yitro. So, I'm not going to go through each of the commandments completely, but Let's, let's go them in order, and let's see where murder comes in in relation to where keeping Shabbos is. Okay, so the first one is Anoche Hashem Kefa, and then um, the second one is Lotzi Salacha Pesel, or like idol, first of the God, prohibition of idolatry. Um, the third one is Lotzi Salacha Pesel, and no, it's, um, the next one is actually... Loti sa Hashem Hashem lo kechol Hashem. Number three, which means prohibition of vain oaths, using Hashem's name in vain. Number four, zachar et yom hashabbat likad shav. You shall remember the Sabbath day to sanctify it, and then it goes on six days you shall rest and blah blah blah. Okay, so that was number four. Okay, we haven't gotten to murder yet. Number five is kabeda tavicha letimecha. You honor your parents. That is number five. Number six is Lo Tir Tzach. You shall not kill. Okay, so where was, where was Zacharit Yom HaShabbat? Number four. Where was Lo Tir Tzach? Number six. Sorry, I'm holding the book with the other hand. So what does that tell you? The order of importance of the Aseret Hadid was the Ten Commandments go, they, they go in descending order, meaning the first one is the most important which we said was um, belief in Hashem. You know, Anoch Hashem Okechad, which you know. So there, and then he kept going, and then number four was keeping Shabbos, and number six was murder. So what does that tell you? That Hashem equates keeping Shabbos on a higher level of murder. And again, also, it's not mentioned in the Torah that many times about murder, and where Shabbat, and keeping it, and sanctifying it, and, and what will happen if you don't, mentioned many times, just in that those few circum that I read, it was like three times and then when Moshe said it, it was another time, so they were already like four times. And I haven't delved into all the other places, but that's just to give you a frame of reference. So what does that mean? I mean, it's amazing how a lot of people in communities, again, they're struggling, I guess, to get enough men to be a minion, maybe ten people, and they're accepting people who, according to halacha, you can't make your own rules. You can't say, this is my halacha. There's no such thing. They're allowing people to be part of the minyan who do not keep Shabbat. I mean, it's obvious from the way people dress, unfortunately, it's a giveaway. You know, if they don't have their own kippah or I see the clothes they're wearing, I'm not trying to judge them. It's just a matter of seeing how they are. And then when they are called up to the Torah again, they don't know how to say the brachot properly. So what that tells you is that they're not doing things the way Hashem wants them to. So it's not permitted. You can't call people to the Torah who don't keep... You can call a murderer to the Torah who keeps Shabbat. It sounds crazy. But again, that's Hashem's rules. It's not our rules. It's not my rules. We can't make our own rules. We can't, for our own benefit, say, well, I don't want to lose these people. Like, if I tell them that they don't keep Shabbos, then they're worse than a murderer, then they won't come to shul anymore, then they won't have a minion. But as it is, you don't have a minion because 
A person who doesn't keep Shabbat cannot be counted. It's the rule of Hashem, not our rule. We can't make up our own rules. It just doesn't work that way. Now, the idea is if you do tell people that and they need to change, you got to know Hashem in His unbelievable mercy and kindness and compassion, you do choose tshuva. You know that what you're doing is 100% wrong and that you'll be cut off from your people. Your soul will be cut off completely. And you decide to do a complete 360. And you keep Shabbat and you vow to do it and you are working on it every day. Every day then, yes, you can be counted a minion. Hashem will accept it. Everything else gets wiped out. You have to start working on improving yourself. You know, you have to start keeping Shabbat and doing other things. But that's the foundation. The MS, the truth, the foundation of, 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 of you know, keeping of what Hashem wants is, is, the, is the Shabbat. Because it's a covenant. It's a covenant, an everlasting, eternal covenant. It's a sign for eternity that you believe that Hashem created the world in six days and rest on the seventh. And therefore we, that's what we have to do. We have to follow that rule. That's Hashem's rule. So that means, you know, people, you know, are on their phone or they're doing this or, you know, and I saw something today that, you know, nobody knows where I am, where I live or who this was about. But um, someone brought up something about what I mentioned earlier, like, oh, why is Hashem so, you know, says things so graphically and it's so harsh and with so much anger and, and then I mentioned, you know, and then afterwards this person I saw walk out to, the, not to the outside, to a car door, and I was actually going out to use the restroom before I left, and I saw this person take out their phone from their pocket. And I was ready to say something, and I didn't. And I went to the bathroom, and I was thinking, like, wow, you know, this person maybe has no clue what he's doing. Oops, I said, I didn't mean to say that. But this person has no clue what they're doing. And I wanted to say also the expression that we know from Perkei Avos, Ayin Ro'av Ozin Shemat Lechol Hadvarim Basefer Nechrim, that is an eye who watches and an ear who listens, and everything is written. Everything. So you can't get away. Like, if you think you're hiding from the people, like, it doesn't even matter. Like, the fact that you're doing it in secret, that the people inside shouldn't see you doing it, you can't run away from Hashem. You can't hide from Him. Everything you have to own up to. The truth is the truth. You can lie here as much as you want. The truth is gonna. The truth is is never gonna be any different up there. You know we have to all face reality. So as soon as you make the commitment, you do tshuva. All that can be changed. Hashem accepts your tshuva to your last breath, and all that will not count. It'll all be wiped out. I mean, you still have to own up to everything you've done, and it's and it's and it's very difficult. But you can start making the changes and seeing and doing the right thing that you're supposed to. So it's so interesting. It's and yet the community, you know, it's it's very difficult for me because people are not being told what they need to hear. I mean, I mean, you know, you know have people really read? the Torah from cover to cover to really know what it says. And I'm doing it more and more now. I am understanding it more now than when I was a student in, in Yeshiva. I, you know, when you, for me, learning for testing doesn't really get me to really grasp the information, but learning to learn, to understand, and to retain it. I'm more so doing it now and really getting it than I ever was because I'm doing it for a higher purpose. Not uh, for a menial purpose of passing class and going to the next grade, which in the end that's not what really matters in life. What matters in life is is that we're using it, that we're practicing it. If we're not practicing what we're learning in the Tanakh and the Chumash and any type of uh, you know safer, then what's the point? We need to practice it. We can't just learn it. We also need to teach it if we can and share with other people that they know the information as well. And that's important too, but the truth is the truth is the truth. Just like they say, a rose is a rose is a rose. Truth never changes. The truth by Shem never changes. We can't change things to fit our own needs. We have to follow the truth no matter what the circumstances are. No matter whether, you know, we're in a, in a situation where we don't have enough people come in. So you have to start making people understand that what they need to do is follow the truth of the Torah. They have to do it the right way because you're not 
helping them get to a better level by just keeping the status quo, by not telling them, again, in the nicest possible way, that what they're doing is against Hashem. Some people are much stronger and they put it right in your face, like Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, who I am a big fan of. But he doesn't pull any punches. He just wakes you up and gets you going. Because he, he it's it's crucial. The reason why there's people like him that do that is because he knows that time is so short. That's the other issue. Where it's such a critical time in the world that we really don't have much time. And if people don't change before the end of time, before Mashiach comes to the end of days, it, there won't be that possibility. You'll be lost and you'll... And that's the point when you'll get it, and it'll be too late then. You won't be able to come back to the, the side of the MS to do it the right way. So, in closing, I just want to say that I hope and pray that everyone will return to the ways of Hashem and the Torah, and only the MS, only the truth, and have lots of Muna that we will merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days, and rebuilding of the base Hamigdash, and I want to wish everyone a... Gemar Chatima Tova, that should be sealed in the Book of Life, and the Book of Life for eternity, meaning in the world to come, for our soul. Thanks for watching.